Tuesday, 9.47 a.m. Hi, baby. I'm, baby, you have to listen to me carefully. I'm on a plane that's been hijacked. I'm on the plane. I'm calling from the plane. I want to tell you I love you. Please tell my children that I love them very much. And I'm so sorry, babe. Um, I don't know what to say. There are three guys. They've hijacked the plane. I'm trying to be calm. We're turned around. And I've heard that there's planes that have been, been flown into the World Trade Center. I hope to be able to see your face again, baby. I love you. Bye. Playing it from a different angle as it slammed into the. The United States was under attack. Widespread chaos gripped New York. American Airlines Flight 11 hit the North Tower, followed by Flight 175 18 minutes later. The once thought to be indestructible Twin Towers collapsed as if they were molded with clay. The North Tower fell about an hour and a half later, while the South Tower fell just 56 minutes after impact. Over 2,500 people working in the Twin Towers perished. When did you realize that it was a terrorist attack? I think, um, I, after the second plane went in. It was surreal, surreal. I mean, it was just, uh, it was just, I was numb. But from my office, you could see the towers on fire. Um, my office, everybody was crazed. Um, not knowing what to do. Um, then uh, the first tower fell and the holy bed was broke out. Um, so people realized they needed to get out of the city. Post traumatic stress disorder, general anxiety disorder, and emotional traumas of varying degrees were experienced by people following 9 11, especially from people who were affected directly. Post traumatic stress disorder is an intense physical and emotional response to the thoughts and reminders of the traumatic event. This response lasts for weeks, months, or even years after the exposure. You know, one of the things that I you know, you didn't really think about, but, but I started to run through my head was always having an escape plan. When, when I'd take the train into Penn Station, I would look around and say, if something were to happen, how would you get out? Mm -hmm. And I would look, and I would, I would um, find and, and get a, a plan in my head as to... Uh, you know, for various scenarios, how would I escape from it? Countless times, the experience of losing a loved one resulted in the progression of these emotional disorders. Those who had lost loved ones during the tragedy sought refuge in their religion, which allowed them to more easily cope with the disaster. You know, because when stuff like this happens, you know, it's like Columbine and like Sandy mm -hmm. Hook and September 11th, you're, you're always asking yourself the question, well, why did God let this happen? Sadness, worry, and anger were the predominant emotions, but the most stagnant was sadness. It weighed down on every American, and at certain points it became overwhelming, such as when Mayor Giuliani announced the death toll to be over 2,500, which included casualties from New York City, the Pentagon, and Flight 93. The thousands of volunteers helping clear the rubble following the tower's collapse suffered catastrophic emotional trauma as well. These efforts at Ground Zero lasted more than a year. There were over 80 fire stations, many EMS squads, and countless other emergency aid companies that represented America in this relief effort. 
from the New York City fire stations alone, over 300 men and women died. The extensive loss of life within these companies, especially within fire stations, contributed massively to the high percentage of emotional distress in the 2000s. Hazmat 1 and Squad 288 were the first fire companies who responded to the 9-11 attacks. All but two of the Hazmat 1 firefighters died saving people in the World Trade Center. Sadly, they are mostly well known for losing the largest amount of men of all the fire companies. It was very difficult because so, he lost so many, so many friends. It was, uh, he had a very difficult time with it. Um, you know, he sort of suppressed a lot of it. Not only was he working there and, and not only did he lose so many friends, but, you know, firemen go to everybody's funerals, the other firemen or not. So he was also in between going to all these funerals and, you know, it was just, it was very, very, very depressing. The American public wanted to show the rest of the world that nothing can take them down, and doing so led to nationalism and unity throughout the country. America was its own support system as people came together and comforted each other. Thousands of people swarmed into blood banks to donate to their fellow Americans. American flags were hung from every house and building, and people forgot about their troubles and focused on unifying as a country. People stopped and kind of took things in, um, and we had the opportunity to kind of step back and gather ourselves as a country and say, wait a minute, we can't let this happen to us, and unify, so we unified. And the people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. As Americans came closer together as a result of the attacks, the relationships with those of Middle Eastern descent became distant and tense. Americans' anger towards the terrorist groups that partook in the attacks on 9-11 trickled down to those of the same religion and ethnicity. Middle Easterners and Muslims became subject to unjust discrimination and racism as a result of 9-11. Anti-Islamic sentiments increased after 9-11 as well, for violent acts and hate crimes committed against Muslims skyrocketed. They were subject to increased harassment and suspicion while at airports or other populated locations. We definitely looked at people in a different light. People of, of Arabic uh, nationality uh, were definitely, unfortunately, looked at with a negative view. In Europe and America, we've sleepwalked into a situation where a particular group in our society is being targeted for harassment by the police and by airport officials. And I think we need to look at how we uh, treat Muslims in these uh, situations. Neg bad looks, uh, negative stares, just not recognizing these people as equals. As fear and suspicions clouded the minds of Americans, the government realized that they must take action to make their citizens feel safe and security changes were put into effect immediately. Just two months after the attacks, Congress federalized airport security by passing the Aviation and Transportation Security Act, which created the Transportation Security Administration. Before 9-11, the airport company controlled the security and practiced its own procedures. However, as a result of the attack, security measures in airports or in populated areas are now controlled by the government to ensure safety for everyone. This increase in airport security was just the beginning. The immigrant and tourist percentage from Pakistan dropped dramatically in 2002, following the attack in 2001. The government created and put into action the Patriot Act that allowed for the government to take extreme action on any believed terrorist movements in the country. The Enhanced Border Security Act also provided a common communication link between systems to regulate admittance and investigation of aliens in the country. As well as the drastic increase in national security, there is also a large increase in private business security. Checking in and going into my building in Rockefeller Center nowadays, you know, there's, there's several checkpoints, you have to have IDs, you know, mm -hmm. there's three doors that I have to swipe to get through. It is difficult to shed light upon such a dark time in America's history. However, we must recognize how 9-11 changed our country both by affecting the mindsets of millions of Americans and by drastically changing the standards for security for years to come. Uh, I, I think we'll fully recover, um, but uh, never forget.